In this lesson, we're going to create the pouches for the backpack. All right, so this can be done very, very easily. Uh, we could come in and we could create a brand new model uh, starting from scratch, just like we've done here. Or what we could do is we could reuse the geometry that we've already created. So I'm trying to keep kind of a consistent uh, style here and a consistent look. So I'm just going to hold down Shift and drag this over using my Move tool. And this brings up our clone options. And in this case, I want to create a copy. I don't want to create an instance because I'm going to be modifying this one. And I don't want it to modify the original. So set that to copy and then hit OK. Let's go ahead and rotate this 90 degrees. But before we do that, let's make sure that we switch uh, the, uh, the pivot point of this object. So I'm going to go to Effect Pivot Only and then Center to Object. And that's going to make things work a little bit, a little bit easier. So let's rotate this around 90 degrees. And let's grab our Scale tool. And I'm going to scale that in all three directions. And let's position this where we want it on our object. So I'm going to pull that down in the Z. And I'm going to try to make that kind of closer to the bottom, like so. Now I'm not really happy with the um, overall look here of this object. So I'm going to take this uh, pouch and I'm going to grab my Z direction on my scale. I'm going to scale that up and make that a little bit taller. Okay, and that's going to fit in there a little bit nicer. We could also pull that over in the Y just a little bit and shape that exactly the way that you want. So if I hit F4, I can see um, exactly how this is going to look. Okay, great. So now let's take this, let's grab our Move tool. I'm going to hold down Shift and drag this over. Let's make it a copy again. And then we're going to go to our Rotate tool and then rotate that 180 degrees. And then we'll go ahead and push that back in the X to where that's uh, penetrating through our object. Now there's nothing wrong with models uh, penetrating through one another, okay? Um, especially if it's an object that's not really going to be deforming. Um, if it's just a prop or something like that, you'll um, it's totally fine to do this. Now the problem that we have with um, objects interpenetrating with one another is that they can create some very harsh seams right in here. So um, if we change this from realistic to or from shaded to realistic, it will kind of show us um, the shading on that and you can see that that crease is very very tight and very hard on that and so this is the kind of effect that it will create by using interpenetrating objects now if you want that to appear a little smoother um, you could uh, come in and get rid of the polygons and and try to hook all that back up now with this particular object it has uh, just as many polygons as this object and so um, we're going to be trying to fit that into a small area and that's really not going to be feasible so this interpenetrating uh, part right here is just going to be uh, just fine now from here what we want to do is we want to talk about how to um, utilize uh, different types of polygons now polygons are not just created uh, from a plane okay they're created from all these different primitives uh, that we have here if we go to our geometry uh, we have extended primitives that we can uh, take from as well to get specific shapes uh, we even have what's called compound objects and now compound objects works a little bit differently uh, we can use these uh, to create certain operations so a very common one that we're going to use in this course is called loft now what loft is going to do is it's going to take two shapes which are 2d objects in 3d space and it's going to combine those two along a path and a shape and it will create geometry and we can use the geometry that that loft has created uh, for our polygons and um, any way that we create geometry we can always convert those to um, hard polygons just like this All right. okay so before we get into uh, creating uh, straps and things like that using um, the different methods I want to make sure that this is exactly the shape that I want out of my object now if I come in um, I can start to move uh, these vertices around in such a way uh, that makes it appear as if we're working with clay so a couple of ways to do that would be to come into our editable poly and let me select the polygons along the border 
of this object. So I'm going to select this polygon, hold down shift and select the next one in line. And then um, let's hit grow. And actually let's select this one and then hold shift. And then we'll hit grow two times. And with this selection what I can do is I can go to soft selection and hit use soft selection. Now the great thing about this is what it does is it remembers my selection and it uses this fall off value to adjust what uh, vertices are going to be moved. So here on the on this side you can definitely see uh, this color variation. Now what does that mean exactly? Well any of the objects that are actually selected are going to move 100 percent. Now any of these edges or vertices that are colored differently are going to gradually move at a different pace. So for vertices or edges that are kind of like that red orange, those are going to move at a 90 percent pace. The lighter orange or yellow, that's going to move around a 70 or 80 percent pace and then getting down into the green which is about 50 percent or 40 percent and then we get down into the blues which is on the lower end of the scale. So we get kind of a relationship here that allows us to push vertices in kind of a soft way. So if I adjust my fall off up it affects more area. If I pull it down it becomes very tight. Okay, So I can left click and drag in my Z and I can start to push those down. Now you'll see that um, anything that is white is going to be left behind. So we want to make sure that we are uh, taking care of those as well. So we can adjust our fall off. We can pull that up and then I could just drag this down a little bit more and try to get that to push in there. Now what I want in this particular case is I want that border to just come down a little bit lower. I want everything else to say stay exactly where it's at. So if I take my fall off way down, okay, I can start to push this down and you'll see how it begins to fit in a little bit closer uh, to the rest of this. So now I can come up here under polygon mode and I can start to select a specific set of polygons and I can adjust my fall off and then I can start to take this and push it down okay creating a very soft um, transition. Let's go to vertex mode and sometimes it might be easier to get exactly what you want by just pulling those around manually without soft selection. So in this case I want these to be at a very specific height. So I'm going to pull those down myself. So looking at these, I'm going to pull those down. And then also let's take this one and then the rest of these, let's pull those down in the Z and then I'll push them back in the Y just a little bit. Okay, so there we go. We have our symmetry. We've got that element pushed down it to exactly what we want here. And that's that seems to be a little bit tighter. Now with the the pouches you could do the same thing, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave those. Okay. Now finally we want to check the shape of the rest of our object. So another way that we can push and pull vertices around is using our freeform tools. So let's go to Edible Poly. And this time I'm actually just going to collapse this. I don't want symmetry to work uh, with uh, this tool because what it can do is it can separate that line of symmetry and it can be uh, very difficult to get that back. So I'm going to right click and convert it to an Edible Poly just to bake down that symmetry modifier. And then we're going to go to Freeform and then we're going to go to paint deform and we're going to use this shift. Now what shift is going to allow me to do is it gives me the same uh, type of capabilities with that soft selection but now it's more of a brush uh, type of interactivity. So I can left click and drag and start to push these in to create a different shape for my object. Now you want to be careful you only want to do this a little bit at a time um, as you, um, because if you get it carried away you can really mess up the model. So it's just for very minor adjustments um, in your object across a large area. So we've got a good shape going here. Happy with how that's flattening out. We might want to pull this out just a little bit more. Okay, we do something kind of along those lines. And I'm going to take these corners 
and I'm going to push those in some and just very lightly we're not going to get into that uh, too heavy okay pulling that up and this also creates a little bit of a randomness in this model because we don't want it to be sym uh, symmetrical all the way through all the time we do want little variations on an object like this okay so we've used shift on that object you could also do the same thing for uh, these uh, pouches here I'm um, looking at those I feel like those are just a little bit too large so I'm going to select both of them and I'm going to hold down our scale in all three directions and let me just pull those down a little bit and then we'll have to individually move those back out some Okay, get those exactly where you want them and there we go okay so we finished out the main part of our object and now what we want to do is we want to start getting into creating the straps and we're going to do this uh, using a little bit of a different method so I'll see you then